So in this video, we're going to start our study of the Poisson regression model and describe when that model would be appropriate. And as part of that, we'll just quickly review the Poisson distribution. So if you recall from an earlier video uh, at the beginning of our study of generalized linear models, uh, GLMs consist of three different components. So you have a random component, and the random component should come from the exponential family of distributions. Then we should have a systematic component and a link between the two. So once we specify those components, uh, we can sample data and use the model to estimate parameters. And with those estimates, we can come up with explanations about the data using the interpretations of those parameter estimates. We can predict new measurements. And we should also check to see whether the model fits properly. So let's specify the three components uh, in this video for the Poisson regression model. So our Poisson uh, regression data might look like the following table. And in this table, we have a response column. Uh, and that's the random component. And we have a set of predictors. And for each row, we can call uh, the set of predictors the covariate class. Remember, uh, covariate is just another name for the, uh, the, the predictor variable. And that's the systematic component. So what characterizes the Poisson regression model is the fact that the response is Poisson. And as an exercise for you, I would suggest trying to show that the Poisson uh, is a member of the exponential family of distributions. Generally, each measurement of the response, yi, conditioned on the predictors, will come from a different uh, Poisson distribution. So we could say the probability that the random variable yi is equal to little yi will be equal to, this is the PMF of the Poisson distribution, e raised to the negative lambda i times lambda i yi over yi factorial, of course, where yi comes from the set 0, 1, 2, etc. So it's a count. And also, each one of our rate parameters should be greater than 0. So that just specifies that our response is Poisson and that it is actually a count of some sort, right? An unbounded count. So let's study a bit about this random component. We say that the response vector with components little yi, uh, where each little yi is a realization from a Poisson distributed random variable capital yi. And our goal in statistical modeling is to predict the mean of each response using the covariate class. So in the case of Poisson regression, the mean, which we could call mu i, that's just equal to the expected value of y i. And if you do a little uh, calculus, you can show that that's just equal to the rate parameter lambda i. So I suggest you you know, go back and review that if you, if you don't remember it. So that means the mean, which is what we might want to use as a prediction for the next observation in this uh, modeling scenario, uh, we can try to predict the mean, which is the rate parameter. So also notice that the variance of a Poisson random variable so sigma i squared, which is the variance of our yi, is also equal to lambda. And so the mean and the variance are related to each other. And in this case, they're exactly the same. And we'll, later on, we'll study uh, briefly the problem of over dispersion, which does not occur in the standard normal linear regression model, but does occur in this model 
and in some cases in the in the binomial regression model. So we'll study what to do if we have over dispersion. And if you remember back to our lesson on generalized linear models, the form of an exponential family had a canonical parameter. And in this case, the canonical parameter, which we denoted as theta i, will be equal to the natural log of the mean, which is, just as a reminder of course, the natural log of the rate parameter lambda. So we'll see that this will be useful in selecting the link function. And so the link function ties the systematic component to the random component, and so we have to specify the systematic component. And it's the same as it, as it always is, right? It's the same as it was for binomial regression. It's a linear combination of the covariate class, and we've been calling it uh, eta. And so here I've, I've written it down generally. Um, you might have subscripts i, like eta i, is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 xi1 if you are specifying a particular measurement in your data set. And so as with binomial regression, we cannot simply use an estimate of eta to directly predict uh, mu i, because there's no reason why eta will be positive, which is required of rates, right? We like rates to be positive, our counts need to be positive, and a linear combination of some measured predictors there's no reason to think that that thing needs to be constrained to be positive. So we have to do something, come up with a link function that would make sense in, in the sense that it would make our uh, prediction positive. So the link function, at least the canonical link function, is the log link. So the function of our mean, in this case is our rate, will just be equal to the log of the rate parameter. And sometimes this is called the canonical link function because it relates the linear predictor eta to the canonical parameter theta from the exponential family formulation of the Poisson. So we have that eta is equal to g so this function of the rate parameter, which is equal to the log link function, and that's our theta from the exponential family. So now that we've specified the three components of the Poisson regression model, we're in the position to use sample data to estimate the parameters of the model. And as with binomial regression, the estimation procedure used is maximum likelihood, which we'll discuss briefly in, a, in the next lesson. Uh, but once we have the MLE parameter estimates, we can then check the fit of our model. Uh, for example, using the deviant statistic that we defined for the binomial, we can define it also for uh, the Poisson model. So we can use that as a measure of how well the current model fits when compared with the saturated model, uh, which has as many parameters as measurements. We can also use chi-squared statistics, which you may have learned about in a previous statistics course and we'll discuss briefly. And so we can check the fit, we can make predictions, um, find explanations, etc. So there's one additional thing to mention about Poisson models, is that often the Poisson response counts the number of events that occur uh, within an exposure period. And the exposure period might be a particular period of time or a particular region of space, and often it will be important to specify that exposure in your model and take, account, take it into account. So let's consider an example. So suppose we'd like to construct a model that can predict the number of times an individual would be admitted to a hospital. And the covariate class, the set of predictors, might include the person's age, 
their gender, other health conditions like a heart condition or diabetes. And a data frame with such data might look like this one here. Um, if we consider the response measurements, uh, you know, I, I just have some numbers here, right? So this first individual was hospitalized three times, the next one two, the next one zero, etc. But now suppose that I told you that uh, individual three, so if I number these one, two, three, four, down to n, suppose I told you individual three was uh, observed for one month and individual one was observed for one year. That information should be important, right? That should matter. Uh, individual one had a longer exposure period, that is a longer period of time for hospitalization to occur than individual three. So it, it shouldn't be that surprising that individual three, you know, unfortunately was hospitalized three times. Uh, we had a longer period of time to observe them. So in rate models, uh, the mean of our response should really include this exposure. And so above that was a length of time. It could also be um, maybe some area. Suppose we were counting some you know, biological feature, ecological feature. Um, we might be counting that within different fields and the fields might have different, you know, might be of different sizes, like a different number of acres. And so if we count, say, the number of insects in one plot of land versus another plot of land, and those plots of land were of different sizes, we should take that information into account. So in this context, the mean is really a count over the exposure. So that means our mu i, which is also our rate, is some kind of count over an exposure. And we've been, you know, calling our count, that's the response, y i, over what I'll call the exposure, some e i. So we can incorporate this information into our model through, a, through the link function. And remember the link function is the log of our rate. And so that should be the log of yi over ei. And using the laws of logs, we should get the log of the response minus the log of the exposure. And these EI terms, the exposure terms, will be known, right? You will know how long you've observed some individual when you conduct a study. And, you know, ideally you should know how big of a plot of land you might be studying when you're counting up some, you know, invasive species. So that information should be measured. And since it's known, then we can move it to the right-hand side of the model, the systematic part of the model. And we often call this an offset term. So the offset term I'll highlight will be this log EI term. And in R, remember we use the GLM function for our generalized linear models. And so we would, in our formula, we would have response and then tilde predictor plus, you know, all of the predictors. And then we would have, we would use the offset function in R. So we would specify offset log of the exposure. And so we'll have a lesson that details how you would, you know, actually implement this in R with real data. We'll go through the analysis, but I wanted to just give you a hint as to um, how this will show up in R. Okay, so for the next video, we'll take a look at uh, a, just a brief overview of parameter estimation for the Poisson regression model. And then we'll think about interpreting the parameters of the Poisson, and then we'll go ahead and, and look at some real data in R.